So the moderator of our next panel is Professor Bjorn Hartman, who's in the EECS department. He's also a co-founder and co-director of the Invention Lab. He's the faculty director of the Connected Communities Initiative and also plays a major role in the Jacobs Institute for Design Innovation. So he's a busy guy. Thank you, Camille. All right. Um, I'm very excited to moderate this panel on the future of uh, technology-mediated education. And this panel is really one of the first events our brand new Citrus Connected Communities Initiative is uh, organizing. And so the Citrus Connected Communities Initiative focuses on various ways that collaboration um, has impacts on discovery, design, and governance in, in different domains, such as uh, education, creative work, and also public engagement. So to just set the really broad landscape, and um, if you've been following higher education, this all uh, will look familiar, maybe depressingly so. Um, costs of education, especially higher education, are far outpacing the, um, the cost of living increases in general. So this is true for uh, uh, nonprofits, uh, uh, private as well as public institutions. At the same time, We've now been for various decades in this downward trend of public investment in, in education. Um, while K through 12 is roughly holding steady, it's certainly the higher education that is continuing, continually going down as other uh, expenses such as, for example, corrections um, are heading up and, and passing. So um, what are some of the trends that, that we see in education? Well, on the one hand, maybe not so much has changed since the Middle Ages. So if I look at you out here, and I look at what's going on in this picture, that all looks vaguely familiar, right? This lecture model has certainly uh, stuck around for centuries. But um, ever since computing became cheap enough that we could think of owning personal computers, there's been this vision of having computation and information technology transform education. So, um, maybe the earliest vision where, oh, we're going to take a lecture hall and just put a big desktop computer on every seat. So this is from the uh, early 1990s at, at Brown. Um, and in recent years, though, we've seen kind of an, an acceleration of these different experiments. So, for example, 2013, LA School District will uh, give iPads to 640,000 students. That seemed a really big vision working together with, with Pearson and Apple. But then it turns out maybe that didn't go so well. So um, that experiment has pretty much been stopped there. I'm not sure the parties are still on speaking terms, which suggests that, well, clearly there's something. The, think about how much information technology has transformed other aspects of our lives. There is tremendous of opportunity, but it also seems easy to get it really wrong, um, even at such large scale. So this is what's happening in our classrooms. Um, on the other hand, then, you may recall in 2012, uh, the New York Times declared the year of the MOOC. So this was when new platforms emerged and it became possible to deliver um, uh, video lectures and, uh, and quizzes basically at near zero cost um, online. And millions of students have successfully taken these courses, giving rise to um, you know, an entirely new field. Um, but also, that hasn't been without its unintended consequences. For example, one of the surprising um, results that people started noticing is that um, the people who did best in the early MOOCs were the people who were already self-sufficient learners and who practically you know, needed this extra amount of education the least, because they were already doing very well. <coughs> so. Tremendous opportunity, but also tremendous pitfalls in introducing technology to education. Um, we have an incredibly exciting panel spanning all the way from K-8 education through postgraduate education. And we'll um, kind of tackle these four topics in that sequence. We'll start with uh, Chris Basilko. He's the head of Alt School in Palo Alto. So Alt School is a, a startup that's using technology to offer personalized learning in uh, what they call micro schools. And it recently raised $100 million in funding from uh, the Zuckerberg's Foundation, Founders Fund, and, and others. 
Um, second up, we have John De Niro, who is an assistant teaching professor here at UC Berkeley and who is known all over campus for teaching the, the single largest class um, on campus, CS61A, the Introduction to Computer Science, which now has 1,200, 1,400 students per, uh, per semester. So really thinking about what happens when residential education hits this scale. Then we have Armando Fox, who is a pioneer in uh, massive open online courses. He taught some of the very first um, online courses on software engineering and is also the faculty uh, advisor of the Berkeley MOOC Lab and has been at the forefront of really thinking hard about what the research is that um, has to be done about online education and also that online education enables that you couldn't do before. And our fourth panelist is uh, Catherine Kim. She is an assistant professor at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing at UC Davis. And Davis is really um, pioneering ways of introducing technologies such as simulation to help uh, medical uh, education, such as in the Center for Virtual Care. So with that, I will get out of the way and let Chris take over.